Hello, this unit is on tools and equipment, and these tools and equipment are geared for catering events. In Cuisine Chef, you will start catering uh, banquet events or breakfasts or dinners or lunches for the district. And then when you take the catering class, you will be doing very large catering events for the school all year round. Um, you will have regularly scheduled catering events that you are working with. The catering events are a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of great people. Everybody wants to talk to you because you're the chef. You're the one that made the food. You will make it, serve it. You will be in chef uniforms, and it really is a lot of fun. Everybody has a good time. Well, when catering these events, we have to have special equipment because we're serving large groups of people. And the big challenge with catering events is to keep the hot food hot and the cold food cold. You must keep maintain the proper temperature when you're transporting the food, displaying it, and serving it. So there are times where we'll be doing a catering event at the other campus and we have to transport hot food over there. So in order to keep it hot, we have to have a means of doing so. You can't just wrap it up with tin foil on top and drive it over there because it's not going to stay above that 140 degrees during transportation. So we have special equipment to do that as well as keeping it hot on display and service. And to explain that, we're going to start with hotel pans. Hotel pans come in different depths. Some are a couple inches, while some are five or six inches deep. They all are standard sizes to fit in chafing dishes. The large rectangles will fit nicely into a chafing dish, and then there's squares that are half this size, where you could put two of them in a chafing dish. You can cook in these, so you can cook the food right in the oven and then drop these into a chafing dish to keep it hot. You can also use them in a refrigerator if you need to store food as well. They also, you can buy plastic lids that sit right on top of them to make that easy. We also have, oh, there are also insulated carriers that these fit right into, so you just slide them into the carrier, close the door, and transport, and I will show you that in just a second. Sheet pans are like giant cookie sheets. They have a one inch lip, so they're not very deep. You can make all types of foods in these. These fit perfectly into our convection ovens. Our ovens are made to this size pan. You can also get insulated carriers for this size pan, although the ones that light in are only made for hotel pans. Now, what's an insulated carrier? It's kind of like a giant cooler but instead of getting food cold, it gets it keeps food hot. So our carriers here at Leiden kind of look like a giant cooler. They're that real thick plastic, and there's two, multiple layers of plastic that have air in between them to insulate. You plug them in, and a fan generates heat, and a heating unit obviously, and heats up this inner space in here. Then you put your hot food in there. It can't be cold. It, it must go into the cooler hot, or into the insulated carrier hot, close the door, and then you can transport it. So if we took the insulated carrier to the other campus, it would still be very hot when we got there. In fact, it'll keep the food hot for about three hours. And again, if you have the opportunity to plug it back in, it will generate more heat and you have longer than three hours. All right. So these are very nice to have for catering events and we do have um, a couple at each campus. Chafing dishes. These are used for keeping hot foods hot when serving food. They look real nice and there's some that are fancier than others. The way these work is um, hot water goes in the bottom and then the food is in a different pan sitting on top of that water. So it works just like a double boiler. Down here is where your sterno is and that's a little can of fuel and you simply light it and it keeps this water hot. The water is in this pan right here and then the steam from that keeps your food hot. Chafing dishes are not used for reheating or for warming food or for cooking food. When, when the food goes into those chafing dishes, it must already be hot. Here is a very short video to show you how to use a chafing dish. And now to take a look at how we're going to use the chafer. First thing you're going to do once you have it set up in your water pan in your frame is you're going to fill the water pan with about one inch of very hot tap water. Uh, this will allow the temperature to come up a lot quicker in that water right there. So once you do that, I'm just going to go ahead and put this lid on top. Then you're going to take your fuel cell, open it up, place that in your fuel holder along with the fuel holder cover which you should have open 
and go ahead and hey it's very important don't light this yet wait until it's underneath and set in place and then you can light it with a long tip lighter such as these this one right here we sell on the site very inexpensively by the way and you go ahead and you'll light both of those and you'll let this come up to temperature for about 20 minutes and then you're ready for your food and the important thing about your food is that it has to be hot going in a Schaefer is not designed to cook your food it's designed to keep it warm but once it's already warm so I'm gonna go ahead and take my lid off go get my hot asparagus and there we are we're ready to serve well thank you for watching and if you have any questions please feel free to use our live chat button okay we're back very simple to use and again he did point out you put warm water hot water in there let it get hot put your hot food on top and you're good to go now heat lamps are also used to keep food hot you've probably seen these on a buffet line they may have a big piece of turkey or ham or roast beef under here and they're slicing it to order I'm sure you've been to McDonald's or Burger King. They have heat lamps that are built into the counters to where they slide the hamburgers and um, french fries and all of that food to keep them hot as well. And again, they're not designed for cooking food. They simply keep the food warm. Food is not meant to be under here for a long period of time. It's used when food's going to be there for a short period of time. Now the professional kitchen is organized differently than your kitchen at home. At home you have your kitchen, you might have one or two people in there doing the cooking and they're just kind of talking back and forth and doing their thing. But if you work at a hotel and they're catering a wedding for 200 people, that's not going to work. So they divide the kitchen into sections and then those sections are divided into stations so that everything's efficient. So you're going to have all your hot food section in one area so all the heat is in that one section and then you're going to have different stations you'll have a soup station you might have a sauce station you'll have a griddle station a fryer station and different people working at all those stations so if my job is the fryer that's what I'm good at I'm good at timing the food getting it in and out of that fryer knowing that it's been in there long enough to cook all the way through if I'm on the griddle I'm good at that and again those people get rotated so they learn all of those stations every restaurant sets up their se sections based on their menu so if we think about Pizza Hut Pizza Hut is not going to have a pastry section because they don't need a bakery they don't sell pastries so that is not something they would have likewise a bakery is not going to have a hot food section they have their whole their entire restaurant is based on pastries so there's a set up now if we go to one of the big hotels like in Rosemont that does catering events weddings and all of that and big conventions they are going to have everything because they cover the whole gamut so if we look at this chart this is a typical full service hotel and again they may have more or less depending on what they offer there but almost all major um, restaurants or hotels are going to have an executive chef and a sous chef and then that restaurant is broken down into sections and so your sections are right here bakery beverage banquet hot food cold food and steward then those are broken down into stations so everything down here are stations and again some restaurants are going to have more um, a very very large hotel may break down their beverage station into alcoholic and non-alcoholic um, there's a lot more rules and things that have to be in place for a hotel that serves alcohol all of that alcohol has to be accounted for kept under lock and key etc um, if the restaurant or hotel does not do a lot of banquets they may not even have this section so again all of this depends on the menu and then again they can be they can just keep going they can be much longer so what you're going to do here on your note sheet is you're going to go online and you're going to look up these jobs you're going to look up executive chef and give a very brief description of what is the role of the executive chef and just write it right on your sheet same with sous chef for all of these sections tell us what foods are made there what type of work goes on in a steward section and then down here again you can give us a very brief description of what their job is alright thank you very much